Alright, hey, hey, it's Mega here, and welcome to another Toyota RAV4 Prime video. Um, so, in this video, we're going to be installing a uh, trailer harness, alright, trailer vehicle harness. So, I got this from Torque Lift Central uh, when I bought the hitch, alright, this guy. Uh, so, uh, in a separate video, uh, in, a, in a previous video, I, I had installed this hitch, alright. If you want to know how to install this, uh, the Eco Hitch from uh, Torque Lift, um, check that video out, all right. But this video will focus on the wiring harness part. Okay, so definitely, if you're going to be pulling a trailer, um, you're going to need one of these. Okay, um, so this was so this was sixty-eight ninety-nine from Torque Lift Central. Okay, I ordered it alongside my hitch, but it came separately in a different box. Okay, so there it is. It just comes in the point box, and then we'll go open it up. All right, and uh, I think I had ordered it when I ordered it. Uh, it took about three days for it to get to me. They were, I think they were in like Washington or something. Okay. All right, let's go unbox it and then see what we're working on. Okay, here we go. So it's time to do the unboxing. This is exactly how I got it. And it was shipped to me. Okay. All right, there you go. It's a, uh, it's, like within a package it's pretty heavy so I've never actually used one of these uh, these wiring harnesses before uh, the ones that I'm normally used to using is the ones that you just tap into the existing wiring it doesn't have this big unit thing okay I'm not really sure what it's for but okay so there it is it's actually a Kurt okay it's a Kurt wiring so <laughs> There's a Kurt wiring and there's a number on the top, 56434, okay, so if you're, it's a custom wiring harness, all right, it's for the vehicle side, all right, and it's for Toyota RAV4, all right, it's a flat 4 connector, all right, a flat 4 connector is probably your most common small trailer um, wire connector, okay, no splicing required, and that's the reason I bought this. If I had uh, bought the one that does require splicing, it would be half the price, okay? <laughs> All right, but uh, yeah, I want to do a video about it, so it'll pay itself off somehow. <laughs> All right, so that's what comes in it. We'll take everything out, but that's what it looks like in the packaging. All right, let's take it out. Oh, yeah, there's some staples here. All right, it comes with a bunch of black wiring. I don't know what gauge this is. It looks like it's like a 10 gauge or something. Pretty thick. All right, it comes with a fuse. All right, a fuse holder. So there is gonna be some wiring required, all right? And it says you use a 10 amp fuse here according to this, okay? Um, trailer wiring probably shouldn't be that much current, all right? Okay, so here's the meat of the wiring right here, all right? Uh, it's got that little box that's in the back here, all right, and uh, I don't really know what it does, but all the wires go to it, so, um, and uh, I will let you, I will put a subtitle below what this thing is, <laughs> but, but everything goes to it, okay, and then there's all the wiring, this looks like they're, the, the wire that goes to the trailer, all right, there's the connector right there, and these look like the uh, the connectors that plug into your taillights, okay, so, I think the only thing that only kind of splicing or wiring that we're gonna have to do is the this stuff right here, okay? All right, and there's a cover. All right, it comes with a cover for your pin, and then there's a bunch of zip ties to route the wiring. There's a they give you a fuse, okay, and uh, looks like a screw and some like a, a crimp crimp connectors and stuff. Okay, and there's an instruction manual right here, all right? And then that should be it, yep. All right, so let's go. I'm gonna go read this manual and then figure out how to do it and then we'll go and install it. All right, here's my go. Okay, so we're gonna go over the manual real quick. All right, um, so it says here, the level of difficulty is easy. Sounds good to me. Shouldn't take more than like an hour, right? Hey, this is <laughs> of course it takes longer because I'm shooting a video. Um, all right, so electrical ratings uh, even goes over that. Signal circuits are three amps per side. Tail and running circuits are six amps. I, I, I seriously doubt that they eat up that much. That's probably the maximum, okay, when they're like all on. 
the wiring locations are S3 and S4. It even has a little map telling you where everything is. This is really nice, okay? So S3 is right here and S4 is right here, okay? And that's not a RAV4, by the way. <laughs> okay. um, yeah, so one, uh, the rear left tail light and the rear right tail light is where we'll be working with the wiring, okay? Um, the tools required, all right, let's go over that real quick. You're gonna need a ratchet, a wire cutter, a 10 millimeter socket, a wire crimper, socket extension, wire stripper, a small flathead screwdriver, panel trim, removal tool, and electrical tape, okay? I will be soldering all my connections, okay? Since I, get my, I have access to all that stuff in my garage. All right, there's a bunch of warnings and stuff. Don't, don't tow, it's a bunch of stuff about towing and fuses. Okay, you can, you can pause that if you wanna read that, okay? Right. Okay, so there is a list of steps. All right, we will be going through each one step by step. All right, there, unfortunately, the pictures are in black and white, and it's kind of hard to tell what's going on. <laughs> but I think you'll get the gist of it. All right, uh, the power lead converter instruction sheet. All right, so I guess that big box thing is called a power lead converter. All right, and so it says it needs a 12 volt power. All right, so you're going to wire that wire to the 12 volts. Okay. Uh, it says to use butt connectors, but I will be soldering it, okay? Soldering. Uh, yeah, so I think this, this this rear page is just for wiring the battery. All right, so if you have, so this is for a uh, fifth generation RAV4. If you have the hybrid one, uh, it's probably going to be the same as this one, okay? Um, the hybrid and the... Um, the RAV4 Prime are very, probably very similar. Um, the gasoline ones, you have to run a wire all the way to the front of the car, as you can see here, okay? But we don't have to because our battery is boom, right over there, all right? So, piece of cake. All right. Let's hop to it. Okay, step one. Locate the vehicle battery. Look up the battery location in the owner's manual of your vehicle. Disconnect the negative terminal. Be sure to fasten this wire down and away from the battery when completing the... I'm not going to do that. Okay, but you guys can do that if you want. <laughs> it's just a precaution type thing. All right, now open the trunk. So we're on step two now. Open the vehicle trunk. Remove the cargo flooring and rear cargo area cover. Remove both side covers. Okay, and then remove the scuff panel by pulling out on the bottom. And then uh, take care not to damage the alignment tabs. Okay. Oh, the scuff panel. This guy. That's the scuff panel, guys. Yeah, this, the illustrations are really bad, dude. They're hard to see. But yeah, you can definitely tell that's a scuff panel right there. When they pull it off, it just shows the exposed paint. I think they're using a white wrap for like mine. So, <laughs> okay. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. Okay, I'm just going to clear this trunk area. Side cover is this one. Okay, I want you to pull that out. Okay. So this one you just lift up and then you pull it straight out. Should come out comes out fairly easily. That's what it looks like. That's the side side panel. Okay, and then when you take out the side that side panel, you have access to the battery. Man, there's like so much space back there. You can totally hide stuff back there. Why couldn't they just have an access like another little storage thing there? Anyway, it's, it's complaining about stuff. <laughs> okay, so you're gonna have to uh, take uh, just take notes. This is where your positive lead is. We're gonna need to tap that for the the uh, the wiring harness. Okay. We probably we could probably attach something to the negative terminal too. There's like there's a there's a terminal there's a actually terminal to put stuff on there. There's a bunch of stuff, so it's cool. I guess they wanted you to hook stuff up to it. <laughs> All right. Okay, it says to pull, remove the scuff panel by pulling up and out. All right. On it. Breaking 
Okay. There you go. We didn't break anything. Looks good. Okay. Step three. Locate and push fasteners on the top of the lower sidewall trim. Uh, using a small flathead screwdriver, release the push fastener lock and pull out. Repeat this process on the passenger side. Using a 10 millimeter socket, remove the cargo hook and the bolt inside the mounting hole for hatch security visor. Repeat the process on the passenger side. So I guess I get to learn how to take apart the interior already, man. <laughs> All right, so you gotta remove this right here. Okay, you gotta remove this right here and you use a small screwdriver to do that. All right, you just kinda um, pry, there's these little flat spots here and you just pry up on them and it should pop right out. Okay, just like that. You can either pull it out or leave it in because when you pull out on the panel, it'll come. Just, just don't lose it. Okay. Okay. The next thing, the next fastener we got to remove is the, the cargo hook. Okay. The cargo hook is right back there. Okay. Okay. So we're gonna get our 10 millimeter ratchet here. I'm gonna loose. I'm just gonna loosen the bolt and I'm. Oh boy. It's in there tight. Let's remember to put it back in there tight. <laughs> Okay, and I'm gonna use a driver to remove it the rest of the way. Okay, there it is. Don't lose it. And then so we just repeat that for the other side. Okay, here's the one on the passenger side. Takes a little work to get it out. The last fastener is right here. Now it says on the driver's side, use it a trim panel uh, remover tool to release the side panels uh, fasteners from the bottom up. Um, release the lower sidewall trim from the upper sidewall trim and then pull back on the lower sidewall trim okay uh, i'm not going to use a trim remover i'm just going to pull it out well, maybe need to use a trim we'll see if i break it <laughs> it's your fault it's bigger so it starts it says to start from the bottom There's a pin here, there's a pin here, and I guess, okay, and then it's just to separate the two halves. Okay, before you pull up, uh, all right, before you pull up on the panel, there's actually one more screw, okay? There was three things that needed to take off in the last step. It was that pin right here, the hook down here, all right? And then there's another bolt right here, all right? So that's gotta come out also, so. All right, uh, I'll show you real quick. Okay, see in that hole there, there's a, uh, all right, see that? There's a screw in there, all right, a screw with like a hex head. You could use a 10 millimeter to take it out. Right, you're gonna right. have to use some kind of deep socket to take it out, but I'm gonna use this, okay? Okay. There's one. Okay, so now I can continue to remove this panel. So if you remember correctly, there's a, there's two clips right here. All right, you can see right here. There's one right here and one right there. So make sure when you pull up, you try to stick your finger in there and pull back, okay? That's why they tell you to use a trim remover tool. I guess it's easier to get into. All right, and then that's another fastener right there. Right, and then there's the one back there. And I think it should just come right out now. I can't believe I have to take the whole interior apart to do this. <laughs> That's interesting. Okay, so I don't know. There's just not a lot of room. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm not going to take the whole panel off. I'm just going to leave it out like that, all right? 
Um, there's a couple other things to take take out. I maybe the some of the rav fours are different. That's what I was gonna say. Because there's another screw right here, and then there's another hook right here. Maybe the hook doesn't have anything, but there's another screw here that holds this tray and this tray together. All right, so it's kind of kind of annoying. That's what I was gonna say. All right, all right. So now I'm just gonna leave it open like that. Uh, I think the only thing you need access to is the wiring harnesses right here. Okay. All right. So. If you take a peek in here, you can see what's in there, okay? Oh, that's all you have to do is just pull it open like that, and then we're going to attach our wires, okay? I think something something in there we got to take out. <laughs> we'll find out. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing on this side. Okay. So that should be good. That's that side. Uh, it, it takes a lot of force to, to pull those out, okay? Also, the pin may pop out, all right? If the pin pops out, you're gonna have to get some kind of tool and take that out and stick it back in there before you put it back together, okay? Okay, so Ooh. in the next section on step four, it says locate the tail light wiring harness. The connectors will be similar to those on your new custom wiring product. Separate the connector from the tail light housing, taking care not to damage the locking tabs. Then insert the custom wiring with the yellow wire between the separated connectors. Make sure the connectors are fully inserted with locking tabs in place. Okay. Okay, so this is your uh, wiring harness unit, all right? Um, in step four, they're gonna, you're gonna, they're gonna want you to connect this bad boy, okay? It's the yellow one, all right? This one goes to the right side, so just try to clean up the wiring a little bit, all right, as you go along. Okay, so that's your yellow wiring right there. The other one will be a green wire. That's the that's the passenger side. Okay, that'll be the next step. All right. Okay, I'll try to do this without getting a shot too much. <laughs> there we go. Okay, just gotta make sure you you depress the the tab tab enough. All right. Okay, you just got to make sure you depress the tab enough where it'll come out, all right? You just give it a good press. I think that's the one right there, so. All right, is it a four wire? Yep. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to connect that into the yellow wire harness, all right? Boom. Okay. And then you're going to plug the other one where you unplug that one, all right? Hence, no wiring required, right? I apologize. It's kind of, it's hard to get a video of this. Okay. Alright, when you're done, it should look like that. Alright, there's a, um, there's the one, there's the original wire right there, and then there's the one we plugged into where that we pulled that wire out, okay? There you go. Okay. Okay, now it says to locate a flat spot inside the vehicle near the taillight and adhere the black converter box using the provided double-sided tape. Locate a suitable ground point near the connector, such as an existing screw, with nut with, with nut in the vehicle frame, or drill a 332 pilot hole for the provided screw. The area should be free of rust, dirt, and paint. Secure the white grounding wire using the, the ring terminal and provided screw. All right, so now it wants us to ground it and install this box here, okay? I believe that's what this is, okay? This is the grounding. I think this is the grounding wire. Is there a wire in okay, there? There you go. That's the wire right there. It's talking about attach the ring terminal to a white ground wire to vehicle body using the screw provided. Okay. If you can't find it, okay. Let me he's see been if I here. So um, the next step is to mount this box. Okay. Um, and I'll, there's a number of like uh, threaded holes inside here. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to show you which one I'm going to use. I found like three of them. So. Uh, I'd imagine if you had a different model uh, RAV4, okay, this is a RAV4 Prime SE, okay, I think the XSC comes with like a subwoofer or something here, so you may not be able to do this on the XSC, but I'm going to do it on mine, okay, I'm just going to use a bolt, okay, that I got out of my, my bolt collection, and I'm just going to mount this to one of those, alright, and I'm, I'm going to probably use a, uh, a locking uh, washer also. Okay, so when I get it in, when I get it installed in there, I'll show you what I did, where I put it, okay? And then after that, we got to find the ground. 
Okay, and if you're wondering what bolt I'm using, it's an M6. I just measured it with the caliper, all right? So that's a, a six millimeter uh, bolt is what you want to use. Measure. Okay, I'm going to show you guys where I mounted it. All right, like I said, it's an M6. There it is right down there. So there is two two bolt holes right there, okay? So that one of them, I'm, I'm using the lower of the bolt hole right there. There's one up there also. That's the one we're going to use for the ground, okay? All right, all I use is a bolt with a... Uh, um, a locking a split lock washer okay there's a split lock so just in case it doesn't come loose okay because it's just kind of just hanging there and there's not a whole lot of wiring so that's why it's in the position it's in right now i would just have it i don't know could i make it straight up i guess you could make it straight up but i'm just going to keep it like that okay um, the reason i chose that one there's another one right here okay that one that one doesn't go anywhere no 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 there's another one right here okay see that right there that one's not being used all right, if you look here, it's just this pillow looking thing here. Yeah. Um, you know what? You can access, you can almost access the, the wiring harness by taking this little panel off. What am I, that, well, I don't know. Okay, anyway. Um, yeah, so I mounted that right there. You could possibly use this, but I, I actually I tried it. So I tried to use this one right here, and the pillow thing hits it. And I was like, oh, that's not good. Okay, so but if you look underneath here, there's a lot of open space underneath here. Okay, too much open space. I think Toyota should have used it for car more cargo stuff. All right, but yeah, there's th that shouldn't interfere with the putting the cover back on. All right, we'll find out when I do. <laughs> okay, all right. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mount the white wire. All right, that's. That's this one, okay, the white wire, the one with the ring terminal on it. I'm gonna mount that to the the other hole right there, okay? Okay, got it? Good. I'm gonna use this flap wheel to roughen up the surface that the, uh, the ring terminal is gonna touch, okay? So you want it to be like bare metal so you get a good ground going on there, okay? So that's what I'm gonna do. Um, you could also get like uh, some sandpaper and just sand it, okay? That You could do that too, so. Oh, so I'm just gonna just sand just enough off where the ring terminal can contact okay we're going to use this uh this is called a flap wheel for okay so you can okay. see i've grounded down to bare metal around the area where the ring terminal is going to be and i'm going to go ahead and bolt it in there okay so you want to make sure you get a good ground going in there okay because it's all it's like kind of painted metal and everything I, I wouldn't worry about it rusting because it's inside the car so it should be fine okay right. there it is there's the ground wire installed all right i don't know why these white for ground man I've seen green, I've seen black, now I've seen white. <laughs> it's the same color as my car, by the way. Um, so, so yeah, it, there it is. It's just with the, it's a bolt with a, uh, it's another M6 bolt with another uh, locking split lock washer on it, All right? And, uh, and yeah, so there it goes. I think that'll work perfect. Uh, hopefully whatever it's connected to is well grounded, but I, I believe it is. If not, we'll find out right. when we test it. <laughs> All right. Let's okay, so yeah, the beauty of the the thing I just did is that we, we didn't have to drill anything, okay? So I think, I believe, there's a screw. If Yeah, see, it comes with a self-tapping screw that you use to ground it. Um, that you, you could just drill a hole in it, but I didn't want to do any kind of drilling. So I used those existing bolt holes in there. So no drilling required, right? No 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 uh, modification <laughs> That's what I'm also say. Right. the manual says that you can use this double-sided tape and you could tape the box somewhere in there okay if you don't feel comfortable bolting it in there like that or if you, if you don't have those bolts available in your RAV4 you could use a double-sided tape and tape it somewhere in here maybe just on the bottom or something all right but I feel like that's the best right there just bolt that right there all right and that's the tape that they want you to use okay 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 next step is a uh, route the custom wiring end with green wire to the passenger side behind the remove scuff panel. Repeat steps four on the passenger side using the wiring end with the green wire. Okay, so we're gonna uh, we're gonna take this wire. All right, the, this is the green wire right here. See that? We're gonna take this and we're gonna run it to that side and do the same thing we did here when we connected it. Okay. Um, so there is a bundle of wire. See that big bundle of green wire? You can uh, take that out. You're gonna need you're gonna need that extra wire to get to the other side. All right.
Okay, so if you're wondering how Hades Omega ran the wire, I went up. So there's the there's the green wire right there. Okay, it goes, um, it gets kind of squeezed right here where the where the plastic is, and then it goes into here. Okay, and then what I use is I use this kind of like as a conduit. Okay, I I fish the wire into here with the connector. It fits in there. Okay, and then you just kind of there's these holes in here. Okay, and you can like just pick it up move it along and then try to get it the hardest one is right here okay this is because it's kind of narrow because of this right here and you can keep on going along the way and then it comes back out on the other end all right and just basically the way it comes in over there i can it comes out here all right and it's going to be behind this panel here somewhere and then we're gonna we're gonna do next is disconnect the wire on this side okay it's it's roughly in the same place as the other one it's so hard to press the button down all the way. There we go. Okay, there it is. And then we're, I'm just going to connect that into the harness and then plug it just like we did on the other side. Okay, show you what it looks like when I'm done. Okay, so there we go. Wire comes up under here, through here. All right, it's going to be hidden under here, so it doesn't have to be super duper neat. All right, and then one is connected back into where we connected it before, and then the original wire connects to this one right here. Okay, got it. All right, we're done with that step. Here we go. Okay, so the next part you're going to use. Uh, this is the part that requires like the most work, actually. Um, so you're going to use this wire that came, it came with, this black wire. All right, you're going to extend the black wire from the harness. You're going to connect it to this fuse okay and then you're going to connect the ring terminal here and then connect it to the positive terminal on the battery okay um so to do that they give you a bunch of this stuff here okay they give you a fuse they give you a ring terminal they give you two um splices or yeah i guess it, it's a connector all right they're they're all crimp terminals and stuff so i'm going to solder all my stuff i don't like I don't like crimping, so um, you could totally crimp it if you want to, okay? But I'm going to solder it. All right, so what I'm going to do is basically do the same thing. I'm going to run that wire through this conduit here, all right? And then it's instead of running up there for the tail light, it's just going to run behind the battery here, okay? And then I'm going to connect it to the ring terminal right here, okay? There's two places you can connect it right here that goes around the battery terminal or right here that goes on top. There's just, it's like some kind of, some kind of adapter, okay? I'm just gonna connect it right here, okay? So you're gonna take this nut off and then put, put thing back on, okay? And that probably be my, why they want you to disconnect the, uh, the negative terminal <laughs> first, okay? All right, here's my go. I'm gonna go and do it and I'll show you what I, what I did. And I'm not gonna lie, before you even put that, that box in there, the black box this guy all right before you even put that in there uh, you should solder at least the wire the black wire on there okay or, or crimp it on there so you don't have to go back in there you know <laughs> it's, it's kind of hard to work in there all right here's we go okay so about half an hour later this is what i've got all right so there's our black wire right there coming from the box all right let's start from the box all right so there's the box there's the black wire maybe i want to pull this a little bit I did make sure to have uh, a lot of, uh, what's the word, uh, slack. I have, there's probably about six inches left of slack, just in case. All right, like I said, I, I routed it just like I did the green wire through here and then out here. All right, and it comes behind the panel here. All right, it comes behind the panel and then it's, it's right here, okay, see? And it goes around the battery and then it goes to right here. And then, like I said, there's plenty of extra, okay? Um, so, okay, I didn't put the fuse in it. Um, I'm gonna connect it first and then put the fuse in it. All right, that way you don't get a spark or anything, or you don't short anything out. Okay, and then uh, and then the last thing to do is uh, to route the, the actual trailer wiring. All right, so okay, so I'm gonna attach it to this terminal right here. All right, that one. Okay. All right. So there's my handiwork. So I soldered that. All right, and I soldered that. I have this cover over it just in case and then the extra wiring uh, that's a little extra right there and that that's the rest of it so they give you enough wire 
to run to the front of the vehicle okay that's if you have if you have the non-hybrid RAV4 then you're gonna have to use like the rest of the wire to run it to the battery in the front of the vehicle okay um, I don't know why you can't just tap it to something else you know? <laughs> all right um, let's go connect it Okay, so the last thing to do is to put the fuse in, all right? And then that should connect everything and it should be good to go, okay? So here we go. I'm gonna connect the fuse. Okay. Hopefully everything is good to go. Um, now we should just check to see if the wiring works, all right? Before we do anything else, all right? Uh, so it's in your best interest to put the fuse as close to the battery as possible. So um, so if you do need to replace this fuse, it's not hard to get to. You don't have to tear through all the panels. You just have to take this battery cover off, okay? And I'm just gonna hide this like down here somewhere, all right? But let's go test it first. Okay, here we go. Um, so I've got a, I actually got one of those little tester dealies, all right, that plugs into the harness. That's what I'm gonna use, okay? So I'm gonna plug it in. see the lights blink all right okay I'm gonna fire the vehicle up and then uh, test it out okay brake there you go left turn signal okay right turn signal Okay, I'm gonna go do the uh, the hazard. Okay, looks good. And there's the brake again. All right, cool. Okay, yeah, you can see the parking lights are still on. When the parking light turns off, that light should turn off as well. Okay, yeah, I guess it doesn't want to turn the freaking light off because uh, the the hatch is open. So, <laughs> um, all right. So anyway. Uh, now is the fun part. We got to go uh, route the wiring, okay? So um, there's a couple ways you could do this. Uh, one way I've seen people do it is they'll just keep the wiring in here, okay? Actually, no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. Let's route the wiring first before we put the interior back together. Um, what people will normally, do, some people will do is they'll leave it in here, okay? And then, and then when they need to use it, they'll open the trunk and then they'll just stick it out stick it out here and plug it in all right what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'm gonna fish it out of the bottom of the car and I'm gonna connect it to a bracket here okay I have a bracket on my hitch I have a bracket on my hitch right here okay so that's where I'm gonna connect it right here okay so when I do that uh, I'll show you what happens all right <laughs> it's um, what pretty much what that entails is I got to take all this stuff out take the spare tire out and then look for a grommet or something in here or I can stick it through okay I'm pretty sure there's something that goes down to the outside. All right. Uh, oh yeah, so before that, let's put this cover back on, all right? So it's gonna be like this. Yeah, yep. Uh -huh. oh, I didn't, oh, okay, you're not gonna be able to put this back if you do that. Oh, that sucks. Okay, so I had to change the routing a little bit. So instead of going this way, I have to go that way because there's like a little plate that goes down there, okay? And it gets caught in there. So it goes out and it goes down a little bit and then it goes around the battery. Okay, so where it goes. All right, and then just the, the little fuse thing is right here. Let's close that. Hopefully you've got some 10 amp. I would definitely keep some 10 amp fuses in your vehicle just in case you blow that for whatever reasons. It's not want to close this. It's not a very good fuse. Go. So if I ever have to get access to the fuse, I just have to go back here, okay? So it's just hiding down there. And we'll put our cover back on. All right. If you put it on this way, you can put the cover back on, okay? There you go. Put it in until it snaps. Sort of, kind of. Okay. Okay, good. And then just snap that down there. And we're done, okay?
can't even see it no more. Cool well. deal. All right, so now I'm going to go take the end. Uh, Take out all the spare tire stuff, and then we're going to figure out where we're going to route it outside the vehicle. All right, all right, guess we got. Okay, so after you take the spare tire out, uh, the you take the foamy out. Okay, the the black foamy, and you take the spare tire out. There's the holder right there. There's a spare tire. If you ever wondered what the spare tire looks like on a RAV4 Prime, there it is. It's a five-spoke rim. It's pretty nice. It looks like it's for like drag racing or something. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so there's there. It looks like there's two. There's three different um, places you can probably fish this through. I think that doesn't go anywhere. Okay. That is, um, there's some kind of sh okay. There's a heat shield. I guess the muffler is right below this. So. Let's, let's get on. Let me get underneath. Them. Okay, he's making here, and I have done it. All right, so there it is. So that's the the extra we have left. I'm probably just going to leave it right here underneath the spare tire. Um, so what I did is I took this plug out. This plug, okay, right here, and we can. Oh, it's already kind of got some dirt on it and stuff. Um, and so there's a heat shield here. So that's a good thing, all right, because the exhaust is right under here. Um, that'll help protect the wire from getting too hot. All right, so. That's good. Um, and then um, when we're done, we're just going to put that back in the hole and then there'll just be kind of a wire sticking out of that, okay? Um, but I fished it down there, okay? And so I have the eco hitch and this is where it comes out. It comes out between the bumper and the hitch, okay? So there, that's where it is right here. Okay. And it comes out, it comes out like right here somewhere, okay? It's not here, but... I already moved it to the side. Um, first, it came out. Okay, like so right when here. it's all said and done, that's what it looks like. Okay, um, that should help keep the exhaust gases and all our other stuff out of there. Okay, I think that should be fine. Okay, uh, if you want, I know what I could do is just put a piece of electrical tape over this. Okay, all right. There we go. Okay, there we go. So that's uh, how I have it mounted. Uh, so, like I said, I used uh, what I use is a uh, gorilla tape. All right. I put some Gorilla Tape here so it would seal this, alright, so stuff won't get in. I'm pretty sure that's sealed. It's, it's, or, it's, or you could use a duct tape is what you're going to need, you could use, okay? So that's taped right there. I might, what I might do is tuck the excess in the uh, end of the panel there so you never see it. Um, you could do that. And there it is. So I'm using a device called a tow, it's called a, uh, it's called a tow ready four flat universal mounting bracket, okay? And that's the way it works, okay? So you've got a part that um, clamps on the top and the bottom of the connector, okay? All right, and then you use a zip tie to zip tie it. Around. So I use it to zip ties to tie it onto the bracket, okay? That came with this. The problem with the eco hitch is there's there's nothing there's nothing hanging out the bottom. It's it's really it's really tucked up behind the bumper, okay? So. Um, there's there's nowhere to mount this unless you want to mount it facing down and you don't want to do that so this is the next best thing okay so there it is it's done and then there's the cover right there this is the cover that came with it all right it's attached to the back of this and i have it zip tied to that bracket that came with the eco hitch okay i will put a link to um to where i purchased this i got it on amazon if you guys are interested in getting one okay and it's just going to go like that, and then when you're ready to tow, just pull that out and stick the connector in there. All right, so that should be it. Now uh, we're going to go put the, put the vehicle back together <laughs> again. All right, here's the out. Okay, so just put your spare tire back on, and then put all this foam stuff back in, okay? Okay, so before we put the spare tire back, we're gonna I'm going to put the interior back together again. All right, so... Basically, just put it back the way you found it. Oh, it's scratched. Be careful not to scratch this stuff. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So, make sure the seat belt is where it's supposed to be. And then pop that in. Okay. And make sure this part is hooked up to the top part. Okay. And then there's the two, two clips that are here. Right in there. Okay. 
Make sure you tuck it behind the seal here. Okay, put this clip back in. Okay. That goes up here. There'll be a little square hole for it. Okay, press it in, should lock it in. All right, and then we're gonna put our uh, our, our hook back in, our, our D-ring. Okay. Let's make sure you install it right a certain way there's a little claw that's supposed to be on the bottom position okay, okay. okay is that done the next thing you're gonna want to do is put this bolt slash screw back in okay the one that goes right where the uh Tarp of secrecy goes. It's kind of tricky to get it in there. You're going to have to guide it in a little bit. Okay. All right. We're done with the left side. Okay. So make sure everything is lined up here. Make sure the seat belt is still to the thing here. Okay. And I'm just going to press this back in. Somehow. Oh, this one does not want to go back. Oh, there we go. Okay. So make sure you line up all the all the uh, pegs on this side. All right. Press it in, and then, um, and then yeah, and then you just got those two. Uh... Oh yeah, that's right. This is the one we had to go. Let me get that. Out. Okay. <laughs> Okay, you might have to use a trim popper tool if, you, if any of the clips got stuck in there. That happened to me for one of them. Okay, got it out. All right, and we're gonna slip that back into here. All right, make sure all this stuff lines up again. Okay. I'm gonna press that into here. Just look at where it all, there should be two clips here. Press that in. Press that in. Okay. Okay. The scuff plate has four, four pins. All right. Or clips. Just put that back in. Okay. Comes together like magic. And then uh, a little cubby thing. It goes over the battery, so make sure we're done with the battery. If there's nothing else to do, put that back. Okay. All right, and then that's pretty much. Oh yeah, yeah. There's one more. There's one more. Okay. Down. Should be good. Now there should be one more. Of those D rings. Okay, that's the final D ring right there. Uh oh, where did I put the, the bolt? <laughs> What's the bolt? Okay. Okay, and the final thing to do is put the the last pin in, the square hole. Press it in should lock in place all right there we go the interior is for the most part put the back together and then just put the spare tire back in all okay right. yep just, so just uh put, put your the uh put your and start putting your the rest of your interior back together uh it's just just the spare tire those foams and everything and and then all the stuff that you had and the cover you had on there okay all right okay so we're gonna put our foamy back in Okay, there's your spare tire that goes face down into here. Okay, and then uh, 
you've got this the black foam holder right there and then just put the cover back on and you're done all right cool deal all right hey it's me here so that is the end of the install right there all right i got my car back together again <laughs> okay yeah just pretty much get it back in the same shape that it was before all right i showed you a little call some kind of tips and tricks that weren't in the manual i hope you guys uh, i hope that helps some of you guys out um so it did say it was easy in the manual and you know what just connecting the wires and stuff is easy but like it's like it took me like five hours to do this all right um just to, and the hardest part is to yeah you have to you have to make that wire that custom wire i'd imagine if you have the uh non-hybrid version and you gotta run the wire all the way to the front of the car where the where the battery is <laughs> on the on the non-hybrid versions then it would probably take longer okay but it took me five hours all right um, there's just you know there's a lot of stuff that you gotta take out and make sure you don't lose <laughs> type of stuff okay but uh but i hope that helped everyone out um i i installed the there was a bunch of uh like bolt holes that weren't being used all right i don't know what they weren't being used for but i used them okay so that 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 actually turned out pretty good i didn't have to do any kind of drilling or anything um everything worked out pretty good i for the most part i didn't have to permanently modify anything okay uh, it was pretty much bolt on except for the uh, uh the battery all right so one one thing one suggestion Hayes omega has is make sure you keep a pack of 10 amp fuses okay just the the big kind the one that goes in in the um where the that connects to the battery the fuse holder make sure you got a bunch of those okay because uh, there's nothing that sucks that more than when you're on a trip and your trailer lights don't work and you blew the fuse and then you got no, you ain't got no fuse to replace it with all right that uh, believe me i've that's happened to be on a couple trips man uh, i blew the fuse somewhere because i was running some kind of accessory or something and yeah but that hopefully that doesn't happen with the trailer wiring i think the trailer wiring you know this is like the most complex trailer wiring I've ever installed, honestly. Um, I'm used to the ones that you just kind of tap into the wires, but that one you have to kind of figure out, yeah, you have to figure out what wires do what, all right? This one is pretty easy. They've done all the work for you, all right? You just basically unplug the wire and plug the wire in, okay? Um, so that part was easy, all right? I think the next hardest part is probably taking the interior part. You literally have to take most of the interior apart to get to what you're looking for okay so now i kind of have an idea what it takes to take the interior apart. i i didn't even bother to look at the 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 shock tower hmm, i probably should have done that um anyway um all right so there you go that's how you install the uh the kurt um a trailer wiring for the the toyota rav4 the fifth generation rav4 more specifically a rav4 prime all right for the hybrid it'd probably be the same if you have an, uh, this is an SE model. If you have the XSE model, you might have like a subwoofer over here. All right. If you have the fancy premium system, I've, I've seen it before, a picture of it. Uh, so it might be a little bit different. All right. You may not have those bolts and stuff. So um, is what I'm going to say. All right. But, but yeah, there it is. So uh, happy towing. <laughs> all right. I hope, I hope this was an educational and entertaining video. Thanks for watching. Um, literally it took, it took just about the same amount of time to install the hitch than to, as it was to install the wiring, right? But I wanted to make it, I wanted it to be nice, okay? I wanted to do a good job, and I thought, I, I think I did a good job, okay? All right, thanks for watching. Here's the out. All right, so in the, actually, so in the end, that's what it looked like, okay? Cool, cool. I feel this is kind of a little too big. I'm pretty sure that that's for a different style connector, the rest of this. That's why there's all there, but hopefully this will stay on there good. Okay, I think that'll be okay. Um, this does run a little bit lower, okay? I think I think you're supposed to actually, this is actually supposed to go in here a little more. So what I might do is I might take it out and put it back. But for now, I think that's okay. There's a little bit of wire sticking out the back. As long as nothing is hanging down too low, I think you'll be okay. Because you don't want to decrease your clearance, okay? Um, and I have cut this wire before, okay? The wire for the uh, for the trailer, it has been cut before, okay? It, luckily, it wasn't uh, it wasn't the actual trailer wiring that goes to the car. It was the one that went to the trailer, and I went down a curb, and it it like I guess it brushed up on the curb, and it cut it. And I was like, holy crap! 
So, so yeah, you definitely don't want wires and stuff hanging out lower than the hitch, okay? Um, as much as possible. I guess, I guess when you, when you connect the trailer, there's there's nothing you can do about that. You're gonna have this wire coming coming down here, okay? All right, cool deal. All right, here's my out. Okay, one more tip. Uh, so those fuses I was talking about, those spare fuses, the 10 amp ones for the uh, the wiring. What I did is I put them in this box, okay? This says relay and fuse, all right? What a what a fitting place to put spare fuses, right? In the relay fuse box. All right, you just open this and there they are right there, okay? Cool. I don't know what all this does. There's, yeah, there's a guide on the other side. Anyway, yeah, they're just in there in a plastic bag. They should be safe, okay? Because I was afraid if I put them somewhere around here, it would get lost or something, you know? <laughs> okay, all right, there's another tip.